Hi, I'm Ashley Thompson with the Arizona National Guard Counter Drug Task Force Drug Demand Reduction Outreach Team. And today we're going to talk about the newest drug dealing trends and our youth. Welcome to the newest trend in drug use. It's not new to your kids, though. Social media drug deals, drugs being sold online through sites like Facebook and Instagram. Well, new tonight, 24 Hour News 8's Heather Walker in studio control with what parents need to know about this new trend. That's right, Brian, and it's popular because it's convenient, but some warn it's more dangerous than traditional drug buying because the buyer doesn't know who their dealer is. So with that being said, today we're going to talk about social media drug dealing. As you can tell, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and TikTok are just some social media applications. But today, again, we are going to focus on Snapchat. Throughout this presentation, we are going to explore all aspects of Snapchat. We are going to identify the application's origins, the appeal to our youth, who is currently using Snapchat and how they are using it, the risks associated with Snapchat, and we're going to hear, um, we're going to see some law enforcement points of views on Snapchat in and it of itself. And we will have a story from a family directly impacted by Snapchat drug dealing. And finally, we're going to talk about professionals, parents, and caretakers, how they can protect their youth from this platform being dangerous. Um, as we jump into this presentation, I will ask that parents currently with youth attending or anyone under the age of 18 to please excuse themselves as this is not meant for anybody under the age of 18. So Snapchat was developed in 2011 by a group of Stanford University students. Since its development, Snapchat has expanded its capabilities with offerings to its users, rolling out multiple updated versions over the years. And we're going to discuss the features further in this presentation. Users can access Snapchat from any device that has internet capabilities. This includes but is not limited to desktops, laptops, computers, cell phones, tablets. The application is available for download through Android or iOS. Like other applications, Snapchat is a social media platform designed to connect families and friends. However, the most appealing piece is the self-destruction feature. Snapchat was developed and is marketed as a platform you can use to send messages, photos, and videos with a viewing timer. Once that timer is reached, the photo deletes. For photo videos specifically, the user can set a timer upon the recipient opening the message, which gives them 10 seconds of view time. For messaging or texting, the user can choose that the message deletes instantaneously or up to 24 hours after the opening. For all content posted to the individual's story, uh, it becomes available for 24 hours unless, again, they change the timer on it. Promoting the self-destruction feature has built a false sense of security and anonymity in our youth. What better way than to send messages that you don't want your parents to see? Snapchat is consistently working to keep up with other evolving applications and trends. This list is just scratching the surface of what features are housed within the Snapchat application. Well, we're going to discuss a few of the most pertinent. First, the snap and audio video feature. This acts similar to audio calls and I, from the iPhone FaceTime feature or Google Duo features. You can choose to do an audio call with individuals you've connected with through the application. These phone calls are not shown within the app, but they do show up in the phone call history on the regular operations of the phone. The voice, photo, and video message sharing. These features operate similar to the applications with the caveat, again, that they can place a timer on the content. The options range from 1 to 10 seconds or no limit at all. Once the, ti the timer is complete, the message, photo, or video closes automatically. The recipient is then given an option to hold to reopen where they get a second time of viewing the photo, again, 1 to 10 seconds. After the second view, the closure of the content uh, makes the content unavailable for a third opening. The photo and video sharing also includes the ability for the user to add the content to their Snap Map, which is a public platform which allows for a 24 to 48 hour viewing time period. Snap filters, you may have seen these on other applications, but this gives the ability for the user to add context and or graphics to their media. Uh, the Snap Map. This allows users to have access to a worldwide map showing their Snapchat user content that has been public, made public. 
Depending on the user's privacy and location settings, individuals have the ability to see the location of those on their friends list by way of a bit emoji as seen in the bottom right hand of your screen. Uh, individuals who post to the Snap Map agree that their media will post over the location that their phone is currently registering at. The creator will also give the, be given the option of including a contact me feature. For anyone who views their public content, they would be able to contact them directly. If this feature is not selected, then they cannot be contacted. Uh, the blue clouds on the map are not weather, map, weather indicators. They actually indicate that there is content in that given area. When you press on the blue cloud-like figure, a scroll-like feed will begin of publicly posted content. The more individuals who post in a specific area will cause the blue cloud to turn red, indicating that it is hot with content. A photo of this map can be seen in the top portion of, your, of this slide. The Snap Score, this feature is a competitive scoring system that Snapchat users strive to build. It also helps indicate how active an individual is on the platform. Snapchat combines a number of snaps sent and received, stories posted, and other unknown factors to determine this score. This score is visible to the public and under the username. Individuals who build large snap scores have the potential to be featured on the application. And finally, the Snap Cache. This feature was available on a public platform. It acts similar to uh, Venmo, where you can transfer money through the application. It is now only available through the premium feature. Know the status indicators. Snapchat has implemented a way to indicate users' status within their conversations. Emojis are added next to the username when certain milestones are met with the individual that they're speaking to. The number next to the emoji does indicate the number of days those milestones have been met. Today we're going to focus on that top one, Elmina Girl. So these milestones each have different meanings, as you can see here. Remembering from the previous slide, again, Elmina Girl, her indicators showed the number 13. She had a fire symbol indicating she was on a snap streak. This means the user has snapped this person every day and that, that, that Elmina Girl has sent a Snapchat back. The symbol indi uh, indicating a smiley face shows that they are best friends or they are considered best friends on the application. The user sends this person lots of Snapchats. Um, it's important to be familiar with these in case you may see on your used phone that they have been talking to somebody with a, the baby face emoji because it is a new friend. Um, and then you may see the hourglass symbol show up, which means that their constant communication has slowed down or stopped. So maybe it would be a good idea to ask a question of who that person was. Snapchat's age policy is in compliance with the US Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPA, in that the minimum age to create an account is 13. Snapchat asks for the date of birth upon sign up, but if, and the date of birth indicates that the user is under 13, then they won't be allowed to create a profile. As we all know, though, that does not stop a determined youth. As of January 2021, Snapchat was reporting 265 million daily users. The United States had the biggest Snapchat user base in the world with an audience of 108 million. India ranking in second place with a Snapchat audience of 74.35 million users. The photo sharing platform is projected to reach nearly 400 million daily users globally by 2024. Uh, the interesting piece with this information, though, is that 15 to 25-year-olds do indicate that they have, they use the platform about 48% of that 265 million daily user number. The 26 to 35-year-olds, or the common parenting age, is only on the application about 30% of that 265 million. In April of 2020, Market Charts conducted a survey with 5,200 U.S. teens average an age of 16 years and two months. This survey concluded that teens favored Snapchat over Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. They do view Snapchat as a form of communication where the other applications are looked at as a form of entertainment. So let's take a look at how the application works. Snapchat itself is not bad, however, just like any other social media, it has its dangers unique to its platform. First thing parents should know is that Snapchat does not allow third-party monitoring. So those apps used to monitor your teen's activity do not work with Snapchat. Providers use uh, user location and 
is visible to others via the snap map if the location is turned on. If you do try to turn off the location, it's labeled under ghost mode in the settings. Uh, the disappearing content, again, we did talk about this, but the idea of the disappearing content can provide a false sense of security for the youth. And screenshots. If screenshots are taken of Snapchat content, the content creator is notified that you did so. This does not negate the ability to capture that content using a secondary device to photograph or video record from uh, the phone playing the, the materials. If Snap in the Snapchat terms, it specifically states that any photo or video posted on their application belongs to Snapchat. This means that they can redistribute it as they feel necessary or as they choose. Snapchat does provide the ability to buy and sell anything to include illicit drugs. Snapchat users using or looking to sell drugs can post anonymous public stories advertising their substances. Anyone around the world that has a Snapchat user account or that is a non-Snapchat account holder can view this content because again, it is public content. Snapchat users can provide the ability for the viewers to contact them directly from their public story. And Snapchat users can view public stories at any time, anywhere, looking for anything that they may want. In the recent past, users have had the ability to transfer money. This has since been disabled, but given the growing trends, I would expect that it would resurface on the public platform. I've just got a message from someone called Plug Life. He just goes, hi, hey, how are you? Oh, I keep asking them how they are. <laughs> oh, God, it's popping off. He wants to post it. And I guess, in a way, that kind of makes it less intimidating for kids to buy drugs. All I need is an address and a Snapchat account. OK, I hope we are to proceed immediately. He's a bit aggy. I don't want to order off this guy. I got a message from this guy being like, yo, what's your order um, and where are you located? And I said, hey, I'm in London, is that OK? And he goes, yeah, what's your order and what's your address for drop-off? So that literally took me five minutes and I could already be going to pick up some drugs. So the ease of access around the world around the, that the user has given Snapchat makes the ability to obtain any substance nearly seamless and hard to catch if you don't know what it is that you're looking for as a caregiver. In this short clip, we did see an undercover type personal investigator um, establishing a Snapchat account to see how fast she could obtain a substance. Uh, if you did notice the accent, this was filmed out of the UK because they've been dealing with this or publicly advertising about this issue since about 2016. And today's, we are seeing these trends in the United States ever increasing. Understanding how easy it is for our youth to get their hands on this stuff leads me to discuss the current trends being seen around Arizona involving counterfeit pills. So counterfeit pills and Snapchat. Counterfeit pills are look-alike pills to real pharmaceuticals. Counterfeit pills are pills that are not provided through a doctor or pharmacy, but rather through production on the streets or by cartels and then sold by the drug dealers. Producing these pills gives the maker the ability to add anything into the pill, like fentanyl, and call it by its look-alike prescription name, such as Oxycontin, which is depicted above. With that being said, purchasing substances from complete strangers opens new risks to our youth. Teens are often unaware of the contents in the substances they are purchasing. In recent news stories, it's been reported that teens who are overdosing on substances purchased from another Snapchat user, thought that they were buying items such as Percocet, and through investigation, it was proven time and time again that the product that they had purchased actually contained fentanyl. Uh, professionals in teen diversion have also reported that more and more often they are seeing teens providing urinalysis tests with positive fentanyl, and teen, the teen's response is that they don't even know what fentanyl is or that they would never have taken that substance. An El Mirage family found what is believed to be 5,000 counterfeit pills in a sandwich bag stuffed inside of a glowworm toy that they bought from a thrift store for their young child in February of 2021. Uh, December 17th in Prescott, Arizona, two males were stopped and arrested with 87 fentanyl pills on them. And in November 30th of 2020 in Dewey, Arizona, a male and a female were stopped with 445 fentanyl and 19 Xanax containing fentanyl. So again, our local law enforcement are seeing this issue. General risks for teens and substance use. I'm only going to try it once. Uh, 
trying illicit drugs increases the chance of overdosing and or forming an addiction, even if it is just a one-time use. Illicit drugs such as fentanyl are proven to have detrimental long-term effects on youth adolescent brain development, growth, and overall health. You guys, this is the point to all of this. Our youth are dying. Part of the reason is that they have the ability to obtain anything they want. They have a low perception of risk related to substance use as seen in the Arizona Youth Survey data. And finally, they don't know what it is that they're actually getting. Many of you have seen the 2020 story shown at the top of this slide or even received a presentation from this young man's uncle. This is Ivan Aguirre. His uncle, Paul Aguirre, is a recently retired Air Force Colonel who commanded my team with the Arizona National Guard Counter Drug Task Force. Retired Colonel Aguirre has spent many years working in drug prevention, but that didn't stop fentanyl from having a devastating effect in his family. This can happen to any one of you, your youth, or your family. October 20th, 2020, a Prescott Valley 14-year-old overdosed and dies on fentanyl-laced pills that she obtained from two 18-year-old males on Snapchat who have since been arrested. Detectives obtained images on the victim's phone showing a Snapchat conversation between her and the accused. Uh, 2019, a 17-year-old Cottonwood area teen overdoses and dies from what appears to be counterfeit pills. The Cottonwood teenager was found unresponsive in his room and during the examination of the teen's bedroom, detectives found an open safe with, uh, near him that contained 24 off-white pills stamped M30. This is becoming an issue around the United States, not just here in Arizona. This is steadily being seen in places such as Florida, Tyler, Texas, LA, Utah. So again, it's not just here in Arizona because it is a public worldwide platform. So who are the dealers? Drug dealers using Snapchat are the same people you and I were educated about and are used to. The only difference is they have moved off the streets and online. This means that cartel members are actively seeking individuals to push their drugs. Those drug runners are actively seeking buyers who are youth via Snapchat. The piece on this slide that I want you guys to, to take away is that bottom block that says non-acquainted contacts. These are individuals that your youth otherwise would have never known had it not been for the application because they have no ties to this individual. It's somebody that they saw post publicly on a platform and reached out for contact. Own Network's Laura Berman discovered her 16-year-old son had overdosed in his bedroom while under quarantine orders due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Through investigation, a friend of the teen came forward showing police a screenshot sent by the 16-year-old of a drug dealer's menu that he found on Snapchat. Police explain that this is happening everywhere and it's extremely hard to track down the buyers. Uh, Snapchat has in the past provided assistance by way of deleting accounts, but not identifying the users. Snapchat is also protect protected by federal law from being held responsible for anyone that does have negative impacts by way of communicating through Snapchat. So again, if your youth are contacting somebody on Snapchat and ultimately overdose, Snapchat cannot be held responsible for them making that contact. So what can you do? First and foremost, be easy on yourself, but remain honest with yourself. Many caregivers don't know to what extent social media may have on their youth's lives. Keep up with social media trends. You can do this by talking to your, the youth in your life. Create your own Snapchat account. Follow groups that your youth follow but be honest with them about what it is that you're doing. Tell your youth that you're making these accounts. It'll help them trust you and not feel as though you're trying to spy on them. Talk to your youth, have open and honest conversations with them and have them often. This will become your most powerful tool. Before approaching your youth, do ask yourself, is my child at risk for using alcohol, tobacco, or um, other illicit drugs? Do their peers use? Do they understand the risks of alcohol and drug use? And what would make them want to use drugs and or alcohol tobacco products? Know their stressors. These can be as simple as being late to school, homeworks, tests, um, arguments with their friends. Their stressors can also look a lot like yours. Some of these examples include family financial troubles, violence in the home, fear of having basic necessities met like food and electricity in the home, parents divorcing, or an overwhelming responsibility for younger siblings. When talking to your youth, avoid yes, no questions. Try asking more specific questions on topics that interest both you and them. 
Um, ask them things like, I saw what you posted on Snapchat, looks interesting, what's it about? Or I saw what your friend posted, you know, what are you guys doing this weekend? It looks kind of fun. Simple non-threatening questions are an easy way to promote important conversations. If stressors are identified, talk through them with your teen. Try not to solve their problems unless they ask you to, rather than express that you are, rather express that you are there for them. Just listen, no matter the circumstances they are facing. Chances are just listening will lead to them asking for your input. Monitor, monitor, monitor. Monitor your child's social media activity. Know who they are talking to online. Are these real people or are they virtual friends? Ask what things mean if you don't understand what it is you're seeing or reading. This leads me to knowing the lingo. So our youth have developed their own way of communication or their own verbiage. Drug dealing, drug, drug dealing or using related conversations can likely and will likely include emojis and acronyms. Common hashtags include weed for sale, oxy, pain pills, molly, Tina. Those are pretty common. The middle column that you're reading here, these acronyms, are where parents tend to overlook. So if, if you're looking at your youth's phone and you see DOC, they may not be talking about the Department of Corrections, but rather their drug of choice. Uh, PI is parent investigator. Uh, POS is parent over shoulder. Uh, KD9 is code nine parents in the area, or alert parent in the area. And KPC is keeping parents clueless. PAL is parents are listening. These are just a few of the acronyms our youth are using. These can be found with simple searches on the internet. Um, know the common emojis when it comes to talking about drug use. That top line starting with the snowflake, any of those can indicate cocaine. The one with the palm tree can indicate marijuana. The one that starts with the grapes can indicate codeine or syrup. The one that starts with the pills can indicate any kind of pills to include MDMA or the M30s that we talked about previously. The diamond, those can indicate methamphetamine. Uh, the needle can indicate heroin, and the mushroom can indicate magic mushrooms or shrooms as they are called. The final column that we're going to talk about with lingo is those four emojis on the far end of your screen. The fuel pump, this can mean, indicate that they are talking about being gassed, drunk, or intoxicated. The spaceship can indicate a drug potency if they think that, that whatever it is that they are talking about is highly potent or good stuff. They could indicate that with the rocket ship. The plug can indicate a dealer connection. And the pi symbol can indicate large amounts of drugs or being baked. So just do, you can do Google searches for youth lingo or drug dealing acronyms. And you'll be able to see these, same with emojis. So know what the deals look like. Know what Snapchat drug dealers use for their advertising. As you can tell in this slide, they do have some of those emojis that we had, and lingo that we had talked about on the last slide. When you're scrolling through the Snap map you'll, is where you're going to see these ads and where your youth are going to see these ads. As a parent, you can report these anonymously if you do come across them. Talk internet safety. Talk to your kids about internet safety. Show them how to turn off the GPS capabilities. So you can see on this slide, I have circled ghost mode, going ghost mode. So Snapchat has changed their terminology from turning off GPS to go ghost mode. When you have your GPS on is when your youth can be seen on that Snap map. Turning it off here will stop all of that where no one else that they are friends with are able to see anything that they do. Um, adjust the privacy and location settings on all social media applications to off. So don't just do it to Snapchat, but do it to all social medias. Um, explain to them not to add any people on Snapchat that they may not know, and not to give out any personal information such as last names, family members' names, school information, or addresses of employment. Uh, be aware of your surroundings when taking pictures, making videos, so that they avoid personal identifiable information. Uh, people looking to harm children or to find out where somebody is will look at the backgrounds of pictures to see if there's information that helps identify who they are or where they are. Explain to your youth not to link up or meet with any strangers that they meet from online. And empower your youth. Explain to them that they should notify someone they trust if they feel threatened or unsafe. This does not have to be a parent. It can be 
a close family member, a teacher, a school resource officer, a counselor. Just express to them that it's important that they find somebody or they have somebody they're comfortable with talking to. And then finally, show them that they have the ability to also report anonymously just as you do if they come across something on the application that they think is illegal, inappropriate, or unsafe. The one thing that I do want to express with the GPS or ghost mode as indicated here is if the capability is on on the application, Snapchat, the bit emoji when it's on will move as the user moves. So it moves as an, as an in real time interactive map, kind of like how a GPS would move as you're driving. So it, when you have it on and you're in the application, it will show where in the, inside a facility or inside a home a person is physically standing. So that's why it's important to turn off that GPS location. Make a game plan. Despite all of your efforts, your youth may find themselves in sticky situations. So work together to develop a game plan that your youth can follow. Emphasize that simply saying no is OK. A majority of kids their age do say no. Allow your team to, teen to use you as the excuse to get out of a potentially bad situation. So for example, if your teen finds themselves being offered a pill from a friend, your teen can say, no, I'm good. Hey, my dad just texted me. Hold on. If I don't answer him, he's going to get mad. That teen will then call their dad. Dad answers the phone and says, hey, what's up, bud? And teen can respond with, you texted me, what's up? Oh, man, dad, for real? I'm hanging at the park with everyone. Do I have to come home? And the dad can reply with, hey, bud, thank you for calling me. I'm on my way. Teen can respond to his friends with, hey, guys, my dad's mad. I got to go. Nowhere in that conversation does that teen ask to go home. Nowhere in that conversation does the dad know what's going on until he understands that they have a built communication prior to that if, this, if his son calls him or if his child calls him that, and says specific things, he knows he has to go get him, that he's probably in a situation he doesn't want to talk about in front of his friends. He just wants to leave. So set up that plan with your, your youth. Make code words where when they call you, they can use a specific code word and you know, I need to go get them. If your team plans to leave the house, get the location of where they're going and the name and number of at least one of the friends that they're going to be with. For extra precaution, you can even get that friend's parents' contact information. I'll let your team know that no matter what time of day, you're available to them. Be and stay proactive. Constantly remind your youth that they have a strong support system at home. Actively listen to their thoughts, comments, and concerns. Understand the resources available to you and your youth through the Governor's Office of Youth, Faith, and Family, the Arizona High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, and the DEA Parent Talk Kits that have tips on how to have conversations with your youth as young as preschool about drug misuse. Uh, develop a parent to youth contract outlining, outlining the rules and expectations regarding their use of online or cell phone time. These are um, available through your local coalitions or again through the HIDA. These, these lay out things such as if your grades fall below a certain level then you lose your phone or you lose your internet time. Laying that out first and before they are given the materials helps when or if they fall behind they know the consequence. It's not a surprise and they help develop those consequences. So know the signs of opioid overdose Heavy nodding, deep sleep, hard to wake up or vomiting, slow or shallow breathing, less than one breath every five seconds, snoring, gurgling or choking sounds, pale blue or gray lips, fingernails or skin, clammy wet skin. These are all indications of an opioid overdose and they can be reversed with Narcan nasal spray. First, call 911 um, and then you would administer the nasal Narcan spray through a peel place press. Narcan is available through your local coalitions or from naloxoneaz.com. Talk the law. Educate your youth about the Good Samaritan law. This law was passed in 2018 and protects them from getting in trouble if they do call for help in order to provide aid to somebody they feel may be overdosing. So what if it has already happened? Realizing your teen or young adult needs help for their substance abuse can be frightening and overwhelming. It's important to take any substances used seriously, but before acting on impulse, take a breath and review strategies for communicating effectively and encourage positive behavior change. 
for more information, again, you can visit Talk Now AZ. There are some resources if you feel you do need to reach out. Uh, Drug Free Kids is a great resource. This organization is dedicated to providing science-based resources and services to parents who, to address adolescent substance misuse. There are multiple ways to contact them by phone, by email, by text. For additional resources, you can visit any one of these three websites, either talknowaz.com, naloxoneaz.com, or the Arizona Prevention Resource.com, which was provided by the Arizona National Guard Counter Drug Task Force. With that, I want to thank you for viewing our presentation.